boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, zombie demon hordes of the internet. I am Pedro Mateos, and this is an LGC how-to to tell you how to install the Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited. Now, this is not by any means a recommendation in order to go out and get the game, because this is pretty expensive. You should not be paying this much money for a game that does not support Linux natively. So keep that in mind. This is just for those people that already have the game and have not been able to get it to work just yet. So, okay? All right. Also, a little disclaimer before we actually get started. My operating system is in Portuguese. It's Corora 2164-bit, but since I'm Portuguese, yeah, I like to have the OS in Portuguese. So keep that in mind. I'll try I'll do my best to try and translate it as we go. So, let's get to it. Now, the first thing you'll need to do is go on over to your account, log in, hit the download game button, it'll download this file right here, the install eso.exe, and you download it. Now, this installer is also supposed to register a particular certificate with your operating system, but under Wine, it's not able to do it. It's the certificate I have down here. Now, there are plenty of places on the internet you can find it, but personally, I recommend that you go to Andrew Schott's WordPress blog here, and he'll provide you with a link to download the certificate itself. Don't worry, the link for this page will also be included in the video description and the attached article, I hope. So, once you've downloaded everything, you just fire up Play on Linux, as you see. I already have it installed right here. Now, there is already a script for installing Elder Scrolls Online, but I could not get it to work for me personally. This one right here, it wouldn't work for me. You may want to try it, but that's not what we're doing here today. I couldn't get it to work. If you do, good on you, but if you don't, here's what you need to do. You click this link down here that says install non-listed package. Fire it up, you wait for it to do its thing, there it is, hit next. Let's install the new app to a new virtual device, or a new wine prefix as we'll call it. We'll call it the new prefix something simple like ESOTU for Tamriel Unlimited. Hit next. You can, li you, can you know, leave these as they are. You won't need any of it, at least I didn't. So that's good. You can pick 64 bit for this one. I have. It's been working great so far. There's only one issue, which is Awesomium. It keeps crashing whenever the game starts, but it doesn't really seem to affect the game negatively in any way, so I don't mind. Now, it'll do the little update here. We're gonna sit on our asses as I try and be entertaining while this hurries itself along. Come on. Today. I'm really not very good at this. Okay, here we go. Now, you find your install file, which is right here in my case, it's in the desktop. Right there, hit next. It'll start at the installer. Here you have it. Now, the install itself is pretty quick. But once you get to the launcher, it's a 31 or 32 gigabyte download, which is a pretty big game. So we're not going to sit here <laughs> as long as that takes a download. Uh, when I did this install, yeah, th this will show up in full screen. Don't worry, it's supposed to do it. But as I was saying, when I tried this last night to sort of see if the installer would still work and everything was running fine, it took me about six hours to download the full game, so keep that in mind. Now, we'll pretend to agree to the little terms of service here, and then you can choose where on the prefix it's going to be installed. You can just let it default. Make sure to remove the desktop shortcut because it's just going to create the LNK file on your desktop and it's not particularly appealing, mostly because it won't work. And then you choose which of the mega servers you want to join. Now, on my other install, I am in North America because everyone else that I know that plays this game is also in North America. 
So we're going to go with that. Leave the DirectX and VC++ 2010 redistributables checked because you'll need those. So just push install. And now we're going to have to wait for a little bit. It'll install the Redist, Visual C, Microsoft PS. And that's DirectX. There he is. And here's the launcher. I do apologize for how long this is taking. I have a hard drive where two SSDs in RAID 0 should be. Now, you may have seen the little error window showing up behind here. Yeah, this is because the certificate is not yet installed. So yeah, this is normal. The, the launcher won't go anywhere. It'll just stay loading. So what you're going to do is you're going to close it right here. And, oh yeah, I should mention, I am using KDE 4 because I don't like Plasma 5 just yet. They need to fix some things before I actually get to that. But back to ESO. You see this error right here? You can just hit next. It'll continue the script. You can just make a shortcut for the Bethesda.net underscore launcher exe. This is the one that matters. Make this one, you can call it whatever you want, you can just leave it default. We're just going to call it Launcher. That's it, showed up right here as you can see. And you say you don't want to make a new one, and goodbye. So, now the certificate failed to install. So what we're going to do is we're going to miscellaneous on the Play on Linux configurations, and you're going to hit the open a shell button. What this will do is it'll open xterm in this particular wine prefix. That saves you a lot of work, a lot of typing in the terminal, so we're good on the Play on Linux guys for this one. Now, what you're going to want to type is wine space control. That's it. And you'll see this big ass window show up, which is like a very barren version of the Windows control panel. And there you'll want to go to Internet Options. And In Internet Options, you let's pull it back down here. Okay. You go to Content, and in Content, there is a Certificate button. In this Certificate button, you see there's nothing here. That's how it's supposed to be. If there's something in there, you mm, might want to look into that. But yeah, you just click Import. You'll follow the little wizard here. You browse for the file now. Our certificate is right here on the desktop, so we're going to pick the desktop. There it is. It sees it right there. So you push next, you select automatic. There will be an option there. The top option will say to automatically select the correct repository for the certificates. That's the one you want. You can choose the this one down here, but it'll it'll basically not do you any good. So just go with the automatic one. Right there. There it is. That's the one. Finish. Oh, it was successful. All right. There it is. There's the new certificate we just imported. Now, if it was in fact properly imported, you can just close all of this and double click on the launcher here. And it'll show up, hopefully. Oh, there it is. It's already updating itself. Good times. Now, this is basically it. As you can see, it's not that hard. Really, the certificate only adds a little degree of complexion. Complexity? Complexity. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> but there is one more thing that I think you should do. Now, first, you'll want to just launch the game, just hit install, uh, as you can see right here, oh, there it is. 31,892.25 megabytes remaining. Yeah, it's a pretty big download, and if you get unlucky like me, you'll be stuck downloading the game at like 600 kilobytes per second, so that was a pain in the ass. But yeah, after you, let's go on over to the launcher that I have already installed the game in. And once the game is downloaded, all you need to do 
is fire it up once. That's it. Just get here, hit play. Now you'll get a little waiting time. Come on. Yeah, there it is. Okay. That's the Bethesda logo. Man. And the Zenimax Online Studios logo. Yes. And the Havoc Physics logo. Don't we just love those guys? Now, what you're going to do after once the game is running, don't log into your account just yet. We're going to go to the video settings, adjust things accordingly. Now, I am running this on a GTX 970 Strix from Asus and uh, an AMD FX 8370E overclocked at 4 gigahertz so I can run it pretty much everything on a high I did keep the particles at default and the particle suppression distance also default everything else I just bumped it up to 11 I don't like depth of field but that's a personal preference because it makes my head hurt basically but yeah just make sure you change this around so it's in line with your systems then what you're gonna do is you're gonna quit the game and once you're back on the desktop you're gonna go to your home folder going to the, your documents folders and find the Elder Scrolls Online folder now from there you go inside live and there'll be a file called users settings txt this is the file you want to open and it'll give you all the in-game settings now from there you just hit control F to look to search within this file and we're going to search for graphics there it is graphics driver dot seven this is the one you want to change now by default it will say something like d3d9 or dx9 or directx9 something along those lines you'll want to replace that with all caps OpenGL that's it just make sure you leave the quotes there those are necessary and an all caps open GL inside that's it you just save the file close the text editor and you could go back into the launcher and hit play once more now I have played a little bit of this game uh, not a whole lot but a little bit uh, I was invited to the beta, but during the beta, I could not for the life of me figure out how to get it to work. So, <laughs> there was that. But then, uh, a couple of weekends ago, they did a little event called the Welcome Back Beta Testers event. That's, uh, that's the full name. And... I'll just put my password here. And with that, uh, ignore the mumbo jumbo on the fonts there because that's a problem with the recording. The game doesn't do that if I'm not recording, but whenever I try to record, it leaves these artifacts right here. It's not pretty. But in game, it's actually fine. But as I was saying, I managed to play it during that event that they did. And I actually liked the game. And then someone was kind enough to actually send me a key. And I'm guessing it was some someone at Zenimax because I just got the email saying that I had registered the Imperial Digital Edition when I actually hadn't purchased it. So there you have it. This is my character, the one that I played the most in anyway. I started this one last night just to see how the Imperial race behaved and, you know, make a sorcerer. Eventually I'll get around to playing it more but this is the one I actually like to play the most eh, fonts are jumbled up again come on this really does not look good I wonder what does this now you may remember reading or I don't know if I mentioned yet or not but the Osmium process does not like Linux and as soon as you get in game, like five or ten seconds after we get in game, we're going to get a little error message saying that it crashed. That's normal. That's uh, inevitable for the most part. But here we are. Tamriel Unlimited. There's a guy on a horse right there. That's an NPC. And it's all pretty. 
And using OpenGL, you can actually get near native performance out of Wine, which is amazing. So as you can see here, there are some artifacts in the water there. I'm going to blame that one on recording too, because I never noticed that before. And that's it, basically. If you followed, ah, here it is. There's the crash. Awesomeium process.exe. Yeah, that's the one. Don't worry about it. Uh, the game will still run just fine. It's just, well, it's annoying. But it's just a mild nuisance at that. So, if you have any questions, hints, thoughts, allegations, leave them in the comments. Um, if you have any idea as to what I can do to stop Awesomeium from crashing as soon as the game starts, I'll be happy to, you know, indulge in that too. That's it. Remember, if you'd like us to do more of this, go on over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. I know I'm a little choky, but I haven't had a lot to drink yet. So, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Again, this was Peter Mateusz, and there's a guy standing next to me. Five dudes. <laughs>